Archbishop Dr. Dominique Bierman has traveled the world for over three decades, proclaiming the gospel made in Zion to the nations. She exposes the false doctrines of replacement theology and preaches restoration to the Jewish roots. Now join Archbishop Dominica in the latest Bible School on Wheels, exploring the entire land of Israel. anthem of the same time movement Amen. that is also the anthem of unify learn it it speaks even if you never knew how to preach just sing the song the song says it all amen we're going to proceed with taking and receiving the first fruits offering of Sukkot I told you that during Sukkot, there is offerings every day. It starts with 13 bulls and it goes decreasing one bull at a time for seven days. And so the first offering of Sukkot is always the biggest one. 
This particular offering is different than any other offering we ever received during Sukkot because it's a covenant of definition or a defined covenant. And before I go ahead and I administer this offering, I'm going to re read to you one particular passage of scriptures that is very revealing about it. And I'm going to go to chapter 4 from 34 to 37. The background of this particular portion of scriptures is that the apostles were preaching in the name of Yeshua in Jerusalem. If you read further, if you read at the beginning of this chapter, you're going to see that they were arrested for preaching in the name of Yeshua. You're going to see that they healed someone in the name of Yeshua. And that someone got healed. And everybody was a witness that he got healed. Everybody knew that someone. He was at the gate. He was a beggar. Everybody knew. He was lame. Raised him up. So silver and gold we do not have. But that which we have we give unto you. In the name of Yeshua from Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's the background of this particular portion of scriptures. Many times we take portions of scriptures out of context. I like to see the roots of things. I like to see the background of things because they give me a much more clear picture and it's much harder to deviate when you've got the roots and when you've got the background. Amen? Many theologies have been made of scriptures out of context. I like to put everything in context. And so the background for these particular scriptures I'm going to read to you is that there was an uproar in the area of the temple in Jerusalem. I'm going to show you whenever we go to visit the area of the Kotel, I'm going to show you that area where the uproar happened. The southern steps of the temple, the area where the gatherings used to happen, where Yeshua used to preach. So you're going to be there when the uproar happened. And the priests or the Pharisees, they came against the apostles, the same ones that came against Yeshua, came against the Jewish apostles. Because what happened is that everybody was speaking in Jerusalem about this miracle that happened and, it, and that it happened in the name of Yeshua, the Mashiach. It didn't happen separated from the name, it happened in the name. Say, in the name. In the name. And so they arrested the apostles for bringing disturbance in the temple area. And the disturbance was a miracle healing. I remember my husband was in India one time. And uh, they were also healing in the name of Yeshua over there. And they were arrested, many of the people, by the government because they were healing without a license. A rabbi wasn't arrested for some reason. The Holy Spirit had him glued to his bed. And he wasn't in that particular meeting, so he was rescued from being arrested. And then he went on to preach in many other villages in India into the name of Yeshua, while all the other ones were in jail. Well, that was great grace. I know that he would like me to tell you the other part of this. <laughs> The other part of this is that when he never came home on time in the airplane that he needed to come because he was in an airplane and he never came home in the airplane where he needed to come uh, because he, he couldn't be in the main city and he couldn't take his flight. He was like kidnapped literally to go. I mean, he was the only one left from the whole team to keep on ministering. He didn't show up in the airport and when he didn't land, I said, oh, Lord, whatever it takes, rescue him. I don't know where it would be. And I said, and I will, and if you do, I will never complain about him again. Yes, and I've kept that newsletter for years. <laughs> as long as, <laughs> so anytime I complain, he reminds me. <laughs> he arrived a few days later in another flight, but boy, my heart skipped a beat. Because when you go to preach in the name of Yeshua, when you go to preach a true gospel made in Zion, it may very well be that you won't come back. 
You know, every time that I go to some nation, people say, so are you coming back on the 15th of uh, October? I say, yes, that is the plan. But when Yavez sends me to a nation, he never promises if I'm coming back or not coming back. So I can tell you, yes, uh, yes, but maybe not. Because when he sends you, he doesn't tell you that you're coming back. And so he could have not come back. And so my heart skipped a bit there. But he did come back. And he's uh, with us until now. Can you give him a good clap offering? Amen. <laughs> he's my very definedly covenanted husband <laughs> in the covenant of marriage and ministry, Amen. in both. We've lived a life of covenant, both of us, that way. Amen? Marriage and ministry. And marriage for the purpose of ministry. As a graduate of GRM, I am very, very much appreciative of what I'm seeing. GRM is good for nations that are foreign and uncovenanted nations, like Papua New Guinea, that is full of traditions, culture, mixed with replacement theology. We need GRM to be in a country because it is like a washing machine. It will move out everything that we don't need and will take us through as we stand with Israel. And I thank Archbishop Dominica for bringing this to us. She thought of us the foreigners. That's why she brought this to us. She is a vessel that Adonai is using for this end time move. I encourage every one of us to take up GRM. And now back to Bible School on Wheels with Archbishop Dominica Bierman. And so in that background, they were arrested for preaching in the name. And then they were released. And when they, after they were flogged, they were released. And they were warned and said, okay, we're going to release you, but do not preach in this name any longer. Because they said to themselves, if they will be preaching in this name, all the city will know the name of Yeshua. Hmm. They were afraid that everybody will know the name. And then they released him and they said, just judge for yourselves. If it is right to obey you, men, or to obey Elohim God and keep on preaching in the name of the Messiah, Yeshua. Judge for yourselves. Amen? Amen. Who should we obey? Men or Elohim to keep on preaching in the name of them. So now that is the background. After that happened, they were released. And do you know what they did? They gathered the Kehillah. Kehillah is the community, the congregation. They gathered all the Jerusalem congregation, the Jerusalem congregation, and they prayed a prayer. They prayed that Yahweh will give them the confidence and the boldness to preach the word in boldness in confidence with signs, wonders, and miracles following. And right after they prayed that prayer, the room got filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, like at the first day of Shavuot, when it was filled, when everybody was filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, with tongues of fire over their heads, and they started praying in tongues. In this case, they were filled with boldness. It was like a second immersion, baptism in the Holy Spirit. This time it was to preach with boldness, followed with signs, wonders, and miracles. He answered that prayer. And right after that prayer got answered, something happened. So the background is persecution. The background is a miracle that causes persecution against the Jewish apostles and against the name of Yeshua, arrest, Suffering in persecution is always suffering, but they rejoiced in that suffering and then being released, warned. Mm. And yet they went ahead and they said, You know what, Lord? Let us have holy revenge. And you say, Holy revenge? Holy revenge. Fill us with boldness, with confidence, and with more signs, wonders, and miracles to back us up. 
I hope that will be the prayer of each one of you. At every given time, whenever you are persecuted, whenever you are pushed or pressurized to give up, to give in what you know to be true, I hope that you will say exactly the same, Yahweh fill me with boldness and confidence and back up your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? Amen. So this is what happens right after that prayer. They get filled with boldness and they went around to preach the word with boldness. And then right after that it says, No one among them was needy. For all who were owners of lands or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds and set them at the feet of the shlichim, the emissaries or the apostles. And the proceeds were distributed according to the need each one had. And now Joseph, also called Barnabas, by the emissaries, by the shlichim, the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, was a Levite, a native of Cyprus. He sold the field that he owned and brought the money and laid it at the feet of the apostles. So you can see that Levites were joining the movement as well. This guy was a Levite, right? It was one of these priests in the temple, and he joined the movement as well. And in fact, there were many Levites at the beginning that were joining the move of the way. The way, that was the name of the movement, was the way. It wasn't called the map revolution then. It was called the way, but it's the same. But it's the same. We call it in the 21st century, the map revolution, the messianic, apostolic, prophetic revolution, because that's the name you gave me for it. But it is, was called the way because Yeshua said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The map revolution is exactly the same. No one comes to the Father through a religious system but through Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. Amen? So, but we call it the map revolution. And so we see some things here. We see that right after... They suffered for the name. They were forbidden to preach in the name. After the warfare, instead of pulling back, because they were in defined covenant relationship, they actually went and prayed even a more dangerous prayer. Fill us with confidence, fill us with boldness, and back it up with signs, wonders, and miracles. <laughs> When you give this offering today, it's because you are going to move exactly in the same way. You are not going to pull back because someone will threaten you. That's the reason why I want everybody to be a GRM graduate and a UNIFI member, because I want you to be armed to the teeth. I want you to be able to be so armed that you will be just like Yeshua, just like me today, and better. Even though it says that the disciple is not any better than his master. That's what it says. And yet, I want you to be fierce that way. That you will never pull back for any reason at all. Will be just like them. And if the devil comes against you one way, you're going to go pray a more dangerous prayer. When the devil comes against me, I say, oh, Abba, glorify your name. Amen. Glorify your name. Go ahead and anoint me more. Go ahead and give me more of your Ruach HaKodesh and fire. Go ahead and open more territory for the kingdom and the United Nations for Israel. Go ahead. Instead of pulling back. Because the flesh, when it's threatened, and uh, it tends to come into intimidation, and then it begins to pull back. The flesh would like to... Oh, Lord, let me die. But it's not die to self. It's die to the calling, not to self. Let me die. United Nations for Israel is an entity that has been set by God Almighty. It's very scriptural. There are two organizations that are in place, the United Nations and the United Nations for Israel. United Nations for Israel stands for the things of God. And we have seen every agenda that the United Nations has is against the word of God. The United Nations for Israel, for which I stand for, is a structure that Almighty God has put 
so that the government of God, the character of God can be established. I've come here for a purpose, that when I go back, I will coordinate efforts for the United Nations for Israel in my country so that our country can follow up as a ship nation behind Israel. And now back to Bible School on Wheels with Archbishop Dominika Bierman. They became even more dangerous. As you give your suffering today, I want you to have the same spirit as you give it. Defined covenant. If the enemy comes against me, I'm going to become even more dangerous to his kingdom. I'm going to go forward even more than before. Instead of becoming a victim of the circumstances, a victim of the persecution, a victim of the rejection of my best friends, I am going to move forward even more than before. And I'm going to cry out, and many people know, you know what I'm saying when I say, I want holy revenge. Amen. I always say, I want holy revenge. Amen. And I mean business with that. I really want holy revenge. From my point of view, the most important thing at the end of the day is that the name of Yeshua will be glorified. That the name of Yahweh will be glorified. Above my life, above my kids, above my interests, above my needs, above my everything. I want his name to be glorified. See, it says that his name was profaned among the nations. And I, as a Jew, want to actually glorify his name among the nations. Got that kind of a mandate. I want his name to be glorified. Amen? Amen. So don't pull back. Defined. Covenanted. Move forward. I had a special picture over uh, again in, in my office for many years. And I still, in fact, of all my moves and the moves here and the moves into nations and move from here to there, I still have that picture. And it's a picture of a stork that is swallowing a frog. And the stork is swallowing a frog. And the frog, though the frog is being swallowed, the frog has her hands around the neck of the stork. Even though she's being swallowed, she has the hands around the neck of the stork, and it says, never, never give up. Never, never give up. When you are a definedly covenanted person, you are going to finish your course. You're going to never, 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 never give up, and you're not going to deviate from it. Even if you have your best friend calling you to deviate from it. Even you have, I don't know, the one you love the most calling you. There is no one that I love more than I love Yeshua. No one. And we will not deviate. Amen? Amen. So notice here that it says that they did something interesting that many people have not known what it really means. It says this. No one among them was needy for all who were owners of lands or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds and set them at the feet of the emissaries, at the feet of the apostles. Those are the Jewish apostles of the first century. What does it mean to put the money at the feet of someone? In the Eastern, Middle Eastern or Eastern way of doing things, when you put the money at the feet of someone, it represents that that money is going to serve someone and that someone will not serve the money. I'm going to repeat that again. Amen. It means that that someone is not going to serve the money, but that money is going to serve that someone. So that money, which is neutral, is not the root of all evil. The root of all evil is the love of mammon. By putting the monies, the wealth, the possessions, and the land at the feet of the recognized Jewish apostles of the time, they were saying, we know that you are not servants of mammon, and we know that this money is going to serve you and through you the purposes of the kingdom. I'm sure you didn't know that. Because many thought that putting the money at the feet of the apostles meant, you know, well, we, we just basically honor you to the max. It's true 
it is a great act of honor and submission of your own wealth at the feet of those trusted individuals, those Jewish apostles. They were trusted individuals because they were covenanted. They already had suffered for the name. They already had been arrested. They had already been tested that they mean business and they were not going to pull back. And right afterwards, Yahweh entrusted them with the money and the wealth. See? That's why he doesn't do it right away. He does it when we are trusted. He does it when we are covenanted. He does it when we've been tested that we are not going to pull back. No matter what happens in our life, we are never going to deny the name. And we're going to continue moving forward in the name. Amen? Amen. So actually, it represents that money is a servant. We are not to serve mammon. Money is to serve us. Whether it's our personal needs, whether it is the needs of others, whether it is the needs of the kingdom, but money cannot be the Lord. And we cannot, the moment we worship mammon. And we can see that right after this chapter comes chapter 5, where about some people sold a field, but lied about the amount of money that they were going to put at the feet of the apostles. And they were killed for lying because actually they had the love of mammon. They had the love of mammon because they came and they brought half of the proceeds. And, and the apostle said, you know, it was in your hands to give it or not to give it. I didn't tell you to give it, said Peter. I didn't tell you to give it. You could have decided not to give it. But when you gave it and you lied about the sum that you're giving, then that means that you technically are a worshiper of mammon and a liar on top of it. <coughs> and so they were killed in the presence of an apostle. So the first time anybody gets killed among the believers, is among the believers, is because they lied about money. This message by Archbishop Dominica Bierman will continue in the next Bible School on Wheels. Shalom. How are you doing financially? That's right, God wants you blessed financially. And my wife has written many books and one of them is Restoration of Holy Giving. With this book, it will guide you, it will help you. You will be surprised that God has saving plans for you, that there's many ways that God wants to bless you and you just have to know that reading this book will set you in another place financially. How do I mean? Every year, you can come to Israel. What? That's right. God has a plan for all his children to come to Israel at least once a year. What's the plan? Read the book, and you'll find out, and you'll be blessed. Sanctify my heart. If you enjoyed today's program, we'd love to hear from you. Please send your comments, requests, or donations to kad-esh.org or mail to Kadesh Map Ministries. 52 Tuscan Way, Suite 202-412, St. Augustine, Florida, 32092, USA. Have a blessed week, and join us again for the next Bible School on Wheels. Shalom.